Hey guys, it's Rainy Nights. Yesterday I uploaded the uh, all of the realm bosses from easiest to hardest, and uh, that video was actually a little bit different for me because I did not advertise it anywhere whatsoever, and it still did very well for me as far as like views and engagement went. So that's good to know. I don't have to go out of my way to um, drop links in random places from people that you know just everyone on the internet hates self promotion, right? kind of an inexplicable thing. Um, but yeah, so that's good to know. So definitely the Realm content will continue. Uh, I feel like the comments were a lot more positive as well when it was people coming to me rather than me going to them. Um, so yeah, that, that made me happy. Very good to see. So this time we're going to do worst to best. So this has to deal with um, so if I put something in the S tier, then I think it's super well designed, has great mechanics, is balanced and fun, etc. Is rewarding, all the stuff like that. And if, if I put something in D tier, then it's either just super irritating, a little bit pointless, uh, not worth your time, or is just designed poorly in my opinion or needs a rework. So that's how we're going to do this. Uh, last video ended up nearly being an hour. And um, this one I think is going to be actually more difficult because there's a lot more room to elaborate on each of these. Where in the last one it was just easy or hard. It's either easy or it's hard. And then it's, it still ended up being almost an hour. This one though, there's a lot to talk about. So I'm going to try my best to make things quick, but it probably will be a long one again. Uh, so let's start off with some bad bosses. Just having a quick glance here. Are there any bad bosses in here? I think the cultists, the cultists are honestly kind of bad bosses. I'm going to put them in C tier because they honestly should not be stunnable. I get why they were historically, but I think it's time for a change. Um, most, most live service games, which is what Realm kind of is, uh, will usually have constant balances and updates. Like in RuneScape, every week things are majorly changing. Like... Uh, all the time so that's how most mmos function but this one doesn't so i think it's kind of strange that it's been over six years now and the cultists have not been changed at all they're still able to be stunned it's still the same easy thing over and over again even though it's an exalt dungeon so basically they're 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 like loot pinatas it's way they're way too easy is actually why i'm putting them solo and i just think they should not be uh, stunnable so let's see where are the other ones um as before, just like the last video, I'll tell you right now, B, C, D will have no ordering whatsoever. S and A, we will order from worst to best properly in, in the actual row itself. So more cultists, this guy, I know their names are like Dirge, Malice, I don't know, Bazaran, I think, or is that a demon name? I don't know their names. They're just, I just think of them as color boys, colored people. <laughs> that came out wrong. Colored people. I mean, that is technically what they are, but yes, I admit that came out wrong. Is there any other colored people? Yes, there's the yellow one, which also is bad. Um, another bad thing to say. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. Okay, I think there's supposed to be one more, but oh well, I can't find it right now. Uh, this guy, I'm going to put in D tier. He's stupid. I th I'm pretty sure he can be stunned. Thank God, actually. Um, but he's just a stupid little fast boy that shotguns you if you're unlucky enough to be on top of him. So bad boss. Cupcake, nothing to talk about. Just a loot pinata. Takes forever. It's so annoying to get this thing to spawn as well. Sometimes it'll spawn quickly. Other times you'll be like stuck there for like 30 minutes plus trying to get it. Uh, this boss, yeah, I know it's, it's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reference and that's great and everything, but... It's absurdly rare to find this tea room, and when you do find it, you kind of have to have, you know, a Wikipedia open so that you can say the right thing. Most of the time, I just say pizza, and I hope for the best, but there's technically a bunch of different phrases that you're supposed to say. And even if you do get it right, the reward's not that great. It's like one defense potion and, like, maybe a chance at murky slash void blade, but it's pretty, pretty rare, I think. No idea who that is. Probably a hidden interregnum syndicate member but just don't know, not memorable enough to put higher. Uh, Fountain Spirits, I mean, this is probably like my number one waifu of the bosses in the game. Like, if, if this is purely because of a subreddit called r slash ROTMG Gone Wild. There's a particularly incredibly good fan art. And yeah, that's, don't look that up unless you're prepared to see what you're prepared to see and you're 18 plus. 
So, but yeah, just because, I mean, that that's why it hurts my heart to put her so low. But as far as mechanics go, it, it's weird because you can kind of stand on top of her and eat the shotgun for breakfast and you won't really take any damage at all. Um, so I think that's kind of odd. It's basically a Lu Pinata, way too easy. Magic Woods is one of the most underwhelming content updates we've ever had. It's kind of a whatever dungeon. The white bags are terrible. Um, the only reason to do it is just if you're getting bored of doing snake pits uh, and you want speed. This guy is an alien boy. I have nothing to say about him. They're, they're basically not even bosses. They're just uh, regular enemies. So whoever made this list, actually, we can we can shut them out. Sheen dude, Nightcore god. I would not have put on. I would not have put these alien bosses here personally, but I still appreciate you making the uh, tier list for us. So, well, not that you made it for me specifically, but no offense. I'm. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, Stone Guardians D tier, outdated, way too easy, just not fun or engaging. The most fun thing about them is if you're doing a coordinated Discord raid and you try to kill them at the exact same moment as each other. But that's pretty rare, but it has it does happen sometimes. So I guess that's somewhat cool, but nah, needs an update. Uh, again, I would not have put that on the list. That is the snake, or that's either Tea Room Snake or it's the snake that draw. Okay, this is actually Snake, but Tea Room. I said it wrong in the last video, didn't I? In the last video, I said this was the Forbidden Jungle Snake, like the one that drops the portal. I was wrong. This is actually the Snake Pit Tea Room. Thankfully for me, it would not have changed the position in that other video because they're both D tier. Party God sucks. So annoying sometimes. If you ever find a beach zone by yourself or like with one other person, it will, it will take you a very long time to kill it because uh, it regenerates health faster than you can deal damage to it. So you need too many people, and there's obviously no reward at all. Um, Forbidden Jungle, no, sucks. Too easy. I mean, it's supposed to be. Actually, I guess it's technically okay. But I'm still going to put in D tier because it's just not It's not a real boss. It's a standard enemy. Might as well be. Uh, this guy, Bilgewater. I guess he has enough mechanics to keep him out of D, but I don't think he's that interesting. Uh, obviously, the new reworked version is way superior, far superior to the old version. The old version, he would die in two seconds. He could be stunned the entire time. Um, so he was a loot pinata. He's not a loot pinata anymore. You actually have to kind of WASD a little bit. You can also abuse the teleport function to get some invulnerability frames. But yeah, I don't know. He's just not that fun to me. Not that engaging. Gulp herd. Kind of a D tier. No particular reason. I just think he's kind of lame. Just not that fun. Uh, you, you, if you want to get like maximum DPS, you have to sit in the slow water, which also sickens you, which is not cool, not fun. Rototo, nothing to say, just a very basic standard enemy, just a standard enemy. These are just literally larger versions of standard enemies. The only difference is that they're bigger. Okay, the cube god. The cube god, actually, I will put in D tier as well. Not only is this the only event white that I've never gotten, uh, the Sea Dirk. I, I have a reskin version of it, but it's not the same, right? I want an original one. So not only is this probably the hardest one to get a white bag from, anecdotally, but I kind of believe that as well. But um, it's it's odd because if you have too many people, it's a it's a loot pinata because it can be stunned permanently. And if you have little, a small amount of people, it will, like, the difficulty will turn to, like, well, not difficulty, but you won't really be able to do it if you have, sm like, a small amount of people because it just deals too much damage. Um, Trickster and Knight can make this super easy, but I personally like to solo Realm Clear, and this is a, this is a, this is a boss that forces me to switch characters to uh, solo clear, which I don't really like. Lord of the Lost Lands, D tier, way too easy, can be stunned. Biff, D tier, annoying, just just annoying. All right, I am finding a way to get through some of these uh, these the bottom ones a bit quicker. Beer God, ah, D tier for me as well. I appreciate the rework they've done, but drunk is just an incredibly annoying status effect. So 
that's the main reason for me. Ruthven, D tier, way too easy. Rework changed, nothing about him at all. So he needs another one. Also confuses a pain in the ass. And that's his whole thing. Uh, this thing, just a standard enemy, not really a boss. This thing's also standard enemy. I mean, technically not, but you know what I mean, right? They're just, they might as well be standard enemies with how small their health bars are. Uh, Chicken God. I don't really remember how this fight goes, but I remember not really liking or caring about it. Tutorial boss. No, not a boss. Literally just a regular enemy. The Wanderer. The Wanderer is actually surprisingly annoying. I'll put in C tier though because there is some differences in mechanics. So this depends entirely on when and where you fight him. If you fight him as a dungeon modifier for a Godlands dungeon, he's very easy, has a few annoying and vulnerability phases which waste your time. Otherwise, though, pretty chill. Loot's not that great though, to be honest. Um, if you fight him in Hidden Interregnum, then he's on like he's cracked. He's doing like actual bullet hell dodge patterns that you have to kind of learn. Um, but yeah, it just depends where you fight him. But in general, I think he's kind of annoying. This thing is pointless. It's just a, it's just a chest. It's like an event chest that gives you a random mystery pot. This thing here is okay. That thing's okay. Yes, it's kind of annoying because you have to deal with confuse, sicken, armor break, and if the if the if the green minion is the one that you fight last, then you'll always have to deal with sicken shots during the rage phase of this boss. So this one's actually a thirty three percent chance whether you have to deal with sicken or not. So that can be a little bit annoying, but it's engaging enough. I think it's kind of cool how the screen sort of directs you what to do. Like the the game will tell you go stand here. And that's kind of rare for this game. Usually you kind of have to know what to do already or just dodge. But this one actually gives you instructions on what to do, which I kind of like. I wouldn't want that for every boss, obviously, but just I kind of like that there's one in the game that gives you instructions. This guy is okay, I guess. He's all right. I don't really have a lot to say about him, but he's he's okay. Uh, this, is, this is an example of a good boss that this boss should be stunnable, or not the boss itself, but the so the, so the little pillar generator things that's sort of uh, make like a, what shape is that? What's the shape? It's like a house shape, a house shape. There's probably a better word for that, but um, those generators you can stun them, and I agree with that choice because that makes knights have a use in that dungeon. There are examples. I'm not saying like knights should have stun removed. I'm just saying some bosses should not be stunnable. Like I do not think the cultus hideout cultists should be stunnable anymore. Maybe when they came out, like I said, it made sense. But most MMOs will balance as the times change. So, but this game doesn't as much. Beach bum, not a boss. Can't hurt you. Well, technically a boss, but no, can't hurt you. Can't touch you. Also, why are we murdering this guy, by the way? If someone could give me a lore reason why we're murdering this random innocent beach bum, that would be appreciated. He doesn't seem like he's doing anything wrong to me. Like the void entity, I would understand. The crystal entity, I understand why we're why we're destroying them. But the beach bum, he's just a hobo. He's just a, he's just a, a beggar. He doesn't deserve to die for that. All right, this thing. Is this, this thing's not named Totalia. That's the Halloween boss, right? So the Halloween boss is missing from this list. So there, there's one that's missing. This thing, D tier, forgettable, too easy, low reward. No, just not fun. Bradley the barkeep. Honestly, D tier, because I think this thing is weirdly hard. This thing is difficult. Um... This to me is, uh, yeah, just too too difficult. I'm not saying I personally struggle with it a ton. I'm just saying for the health of the game and where it drops from, which is the beer god, if we compare this to Lord, Lord of the Lost Lands dropping an ice cave versus this dropping a tavern, ice cave and tavern are wild, wildly different difficulty-wise. So I think that's kind of an odd decision. Uh, to fix this boss, all you have to do is... Like to make it better in my eyes, you just have to either make the boss room slightly larger or make it so the outside walls 
are a different color because right now it visually looks like to the average person that you can walk there when in reality you can't walk there. It's it's a wall, it's an invisible wall. So I think that the boss room is just way too tiny and the difficulty is a little bit cracked for where it drops. Sphinx. Um, I guess I was kind of counting rewards, right? So Sphinx, here's a fun fact for you. I've gotten seven jug drops and one jug blueprint drop in my lifetime of playing this game. And they're all eight of those are from Hermit. I've never seen any of those like eight jug drops from uh, a Sphinx. But just because I haven't gotten a jug from a Sphinx before doesn't mean that it doesn't happen, right? Um, so I have a theory for that as well, by the way. It's because I loot drop for a lot of Hermits back in the day. And uh, the Hermit has separate drop uh, spawns, whereas the Sphinx has one singular spawn. So in other terms, uh, if you didn't know, the Hermit... The hermit god you can get two or even three jugs from the same hermit if you're like lucky enough but the sphinx you're always going to get one if you get one so there are technically more drop chances from the hermit so for that reason actually i'm going to put it in d tier you know what fuck the sphinx because there's no reason for the sphinx to exist because hermit's better now we'll go for the hermit also blind sucks blind's a terrible status effect i'm already i can barely see as it is i have an eye disease so blind just makes the game even more annoying so hermit though hermit is awesome who doesn't love hermit a little too easy but super rewarding super chill and fun hermit's iconic i like it personally uh, marble defender c tier because it's kind of funny i was gonna put it in d tier because who cares not worth talking about but you know what there actually is something worth talking about what's funny about marble defender to me is when people drag crusades behind the group in into the defender you just watch the massacre happen all the auto nexuses and all the deaths it's so funny to watch that for it so and that's not even that rare of a thing um like i don't personally go out of my way to do that but if you're watching this video and you're doing that Honestly, thumbs up to you. I think that's kind of funny. So I like that personally. Grave robber guy. Don't like him. Boring. And um, yeah, boring. Now we're talking about this thing's okay. A little too easy. Not very rewarding, but it's okay. It, it turns into some pretty interesting art. I'm putting this here purely for the art, actually. I just like the little gargoyle demon statues that it turns into. Then we have Limon. Lamont is pretty okay. I'll put Lamont in B. The reason it doesn't go higher is because you're not really going to experience the boss fight properly because she has too little health. And yes, she's a she if you didn't know. But um, yeah, she she dies too quickly, so you're never going to experience the phases properly, unfortunately, which makes it so that like all the rework and design changes to her are kind of obsolete because she just dies too quickly now. Or she, she's always died too quickly. Belladonna, D tier. Boo. Boo. Belladonna sucks. All right. Literally, she sucks because she's a plant, but not that's not what I meant. Um, Belladonna sucks because if you're by yourself, well, good luck. Difficulty is going to turn to like a 10 out of 10. You need to actually dodge every single bullet precisely and properly. If you're doing this with a group of 50 people, then you're just going to leech in the bottom left corner. That's what everyone does. And the fact that you can do that is a mark of poor design. Bez. Bez, Bez, Bez. Bez is a big boy. Do I like him? I think so. I think I do. I'm going to put them in B, all, all three of them. Nuts is kind of irritating, though. Nuts going to go, or is this, I don't remember. Their, this is Geb, right? Okay, this is Geb. Geb's going to go in C because his rage phase is the most annoying of the three of them. Uh, because he will basically just like camp in the corner of the room and try and stay as far away from the player as possible. Super annoying. Bez is okay though. This is an example of a boss that, yeah, I think is okay to be stunned. Yes, it's, you know, it is technically outdated content. And if they were to remove the ability to stun it, I wouldn't complain. But I think this is an example of something that's okay to stun because it's risk versus reward. Uh, stunning a cultist, there's zero risk involved. But stunning uh, Bez, there is a lot of risk involved. So uh, that's okay. Um, where's Nut? Everyone's favorite, Nut. Nut, not that we're ordering B, but better than Bess. Because one, because woman, and we love woman on this channel here. Um, and also, I feel like 
this guy kind of blends into the background a little bit more. He's the same color as the floor. She is a lot more distinct. So for that reason, I'm going to put her higher. And also because woman. Woman respect. Prismimic. Boring. But pretty rewarding. I really like the drops from this, but it's just way too boring. Way, way too boring. Heroic Septavius. Dead content. Not worth talking about. Super rare. If you have a heroic key, please DM me on Discord. I would love to do it with you because I want to have some heroic completes for some of my favorite classes and characters. So, yeah. Would love to do heroics, but they just don't exist anymore. They're very rare. You still can do them if you're wondering, but it's just super, super rare. So that's why I'm putting heroic version of him there too. A regular version of Malthus. Decent. Decent. Don't have a lot to say. Just well-balanced. Lava in the room is uh, not too oppressive. I guess the bad thing is the white demons are just annoying, to be honest. Like, they're not challenging. They're not difficult. They're just annoying. Um, the Gardener. The Gardener. I don't know. I didn't do that many Gardeners perfect personally because this year's Valentine's is... Uh, was... Like, the Realm Rework hasn't come out yet, and that's when this year's Valentine's happened, which was terrible for me because I was looking forward to this Valentine's because I really wanted to get the Heart Prism. I did about 100-plus Belladonna's, but I never got the Heart Prism. So I'll try again next year, but this what I mean by that is nobody was doing the Gardeners. There was nobody playing inside the Realms. Everyone was just camping U.S. East. So I, I rarely got to actually fight the Gardener because the Realms were so dead and nobody was playing. But when I did fight it, it seemed a little bit overtuned uh, and oddly shotgunny and difficult but it's whatever i don't really have a lot to comment about it red demon wouldn't really consider him a boss myself uh has been d tier extremely boring just a, a snooze fest way too easy way too boring dr terrible uh he technically has a fleshed out mechanically interesting fight but he dies so fast that you're never going to experience it so if you've never seen his full fight before, I recommend purposely letting him live as long as possible, and then he will do the other interesting phases that he's supposed to do. So, yeah, but that's a bad thing. Null is not a boss. The tree is very funny. The tree is super funny because I'm not an anti-hacker myself. I don't personally care if people want to, but... So, so what I mean is I'm not going to like record people and report them. I think that's a waste of time and just a sad thing to do. But if you were going to be an anti-hacker, this would probably be like top five best places to sit yourself because this boss activates. So this boss is right there when you enter the dungeon for the first time. And it only activates when a rusher kills this like little plant thing that's hiding in a corner somewhere. And uh, it will activate the tree who will do a bunch of like shotgun patterns that you need to follow the on-screen directions for, just like uh, this guy here. Um, so yeah, this is the ultimate auto nexuser causer. And uh, there's another auto nexus causer who we'll talk about later, but this one is one of the more funny ones because everyone's AFK changing their Spotify song or something, and you'll just see them magically disappear. <laughs> so this one's kind of funny. I kind of like that. Uh, so I'm going to put it in B tier. The fight itself... I guess the bad thing, though, is that it's not really worth your time. Sulphur's Wetlands is another very weird dungeon because it's weirdly difficult for being a Godlands drop, and the tea room is just kind of out of the way and not really worth it. Sometimes when if, if a rusher gets tea room, they'll teleport back to spawn, and then they have to tell... Like, so here's what happens. Five people are at spawn. One person rushes to the boss. Instead of successfully getting to the boss, they find the tea room instead, so they activate tea room. Rusher teleports back so he can get loot from tier room. Then what? You've you've collected your loot. Is the rusher going to go back to exactly where he was and go back to the boss? No, he's not. Okay, so I guess for that reason he's going to go C tier. Is that it's just not worth it? It's just not worth it. Where's the? Uh, okay, here's the other auto nexus or boss. So this boss will cause low level noobs to auto nexus all the time. It is very funny to watch them just magically disappear out of thin air. So. That is kind of funny, but extremely boring. D tier, so boring. I hate Haunted Cemetery with a passion. Terrible dungeon. I wish I don't even want it to be reworked. I want it to be removed. 
just remove that garbage from the game. Well, you don't really have to remove it because there's no reason to do it. You really don't need to do it. With the crafting system nowadays, if you wanted, I mean, I don't know why you'd want a plague, but if you did want one, then you can just craft it. And the residue is okay, and you can just craft it if you want it. Thessal. Thessal is too easy. D tier, but good girl, good waifu. Alien, not a boss. Uh, transgender fairy. Not really a boss, just a standard enemy. UDL Tea Room. Kind of whatever. Basically like free loot. Sulfurous Wetlands. This boss is weird, so I would normally put it in A because it's mechanically interesting. Cool art. All of that is great. But I'm going to put it in B tier because it's. I think it's weird. It's a weird difficulty level because this drops off of godlands this drops from godlands so it's supposed to be the same tier as snake pit sprite world abyss of demons and then you have sulfurous wetlands which is just an entire beast entirely uh so yeah i think it's a weird difficulty level for what it is and where it drops shaitan super boring nothing engaging about it at all um per, the forax piranha guy Kind of whatever. Don't really have anything to say about him. The Decker Act. D tier. Terrible. If you don't know what this is, this is the final stage of the Mad God Mayhem, which is a special dungeon that most commonly spawns during Month of the Mad God, which is like a celebration of realm, you know, but more like is more like a an event to make extra money, right, for Decker. But um, everyone likes Mad God, the Month of the Mad God. I do as well. It's It's the time of year where people play the most. And when you fight this thing, you, you have two options. You either contribute to the fight itself, which means you're putting yourself in danger. You're constantly sickened. You have to deal with a huge pentaract, way more. Um, or you sit in the middle and wait for the thing to become vulnerable so you can get your soulbound damage in. So I just think it's fundamentally flawed, weirdly difficult, and uh, just kind of annoying and lame. I also think it should be a different color because uh, the towers have the same color as the floor as well, which, again, I'm a... I have an eye disease. When I close my left eye, I can't see anything, like at all. It's literally just—I uh, can't even describe it. I, I can't read anything, so I do have an eye disease, Lamau. So I don't like stuff like that. New version of uh, Septavius, pretty fine. Yeah, don't really have a lot to say. He's—he's—he's he's, he's better now than he was before. He still has his iconic shotgun move, so it's not like we lost anything with the rework. Agonized Titan. This is another auto nexuser. So people that are AFKing uh, or leeching in tea room, waiting for tea room to activate, sometimes they'll like, I don't know, go to the bathroom or something, and then you'll just watch them magically disappear. So this is the third auto nexuser boss that we have on this list. Um, it's a, it's kind of a bad boss though. It's because you can just camp outside the entrance. The entrance does not lock itself off, so you can just go back to the entrance. You don't even, you don't even have to participate if you don't want to. So bad fight. Uh, P Cave, right? <laughs> this one's weird because they've added a lot of depth to him for no reason because he has he, he dies in like two seconds. So why does he have like this big fight? So just like uh, Dr. Terrible, I recommend purposely leaving this guy alive at least once in your realm experience just so you can see what happens when you leave him alive. So if you stop attacking him, he does this like transformative sort of he, he, he switches into the other room with the flag, calls in a bunch of minions. There's, there's a whole fight to this guy now, but it's, it's weird because he dies in two shots. Like, even at level one, you're going to kill this guy in two shots. My pet alone will kill this guy in less than a second. All right. Parasite Chambers. Nobody likes this boss. This boss is trash. Absolute trash. Pet stasis. Um, players are armor-breaking you. You can teleport to run through lines which is honestly kind of dumb there's a lot of dungeons that i think shouldn't have teleports and maybe parasite chambers should be one of those because the whole point of this boss if you didn't know this is a little known fact the little colonies that you find on your way to the boss if you kill those you reduce the maximum hp of the boss itself but nobody does that because one one person just runs right to the boss which is a pretty difficult thing to do but if they do that successfully everyone teleports to them so nobody does this Terrible boss. 
puppet theater. A little too easy, but uh, pretty okay. I think an example of good invulnerability phases. I'm going to go with C, though, because it's just not that impressive. But I, I don't mind the invulnerability phases because they're very short. Marble Colossus. Wait, why did I pick this one? Because I usually do it in order. Marble Colossus is excellent. I picked this one way too early. S tier. S tier because I like that this boss, the experience for it, is kind of the same if you're soloing it versus if you have 50 people, with some exceptions. But in general, the boss is like has a consistent difficulty level regardless of people, and it's a skill check. But it's a fair skill check. You're not really going to like feel... You might feel a bit overwhelmed when you're new to it, but you are you are going to get better at it and you'll, you'll feel more better and confident about it. So this is something that's rewarding, fun, engaging, and has a consistent difficulty level. So I don't know why I picked that one. Let me try and pick someone who's an A now, just because I messed up the order. Who is an A? That's tough. I think this guy's an A. This guy's an A. Not putting him in S because... Honestly, the white bag's terrible, so it's not really rewarding or worth your time. But it's a pretty fun, engaging boss fight. So for that reason, I'm going to put an A. All right, we're getting closer to the end here. We have the Spectral Sentry. Not really a boss. I'm going to put this guy in A tier. So if it was just the Halls version, I might consider putting an S because he's iconic. He's like the mascot of the game almost sometimes. I feel like Spooky Boy is more of a mascot than Oryx is sometimes. So that's kind of a cool thing. But I'm going to put him in A because of the Lost Century version of him. The Lost Century version of him is way too fast and uh, is just a little bit stupid. Just a little, little bit. But I still like it a lot. Spectral Century is cool. Also, fun fact as well, just because because I've been giving you fun facts in this video. Fun fact about Spectral Century is, uh, and this is not lore related, I could tell you, I could make a whole video just about the lore in this guy. This is one of the rare things that I actually know lore about. But fun fact about this guy is if, if you do a Lost Halls key pop, you have no way of knowing whether there's a sentry in there or not. It's just going to be up to chance. But if you do a Lost Sentry Lost Halls, if uh, so the Spooky Boy, you can actually see whether he goes inside it or just like implodes. So you can actually tell, you, can, you will be able to know whether there is a sentry in there or not if you do a... Uh, natural spawning lost halts. So that's pretty cool. This guy, hate him. Just extended Haunted Cemetery. Worst rework they've ever done. The Haunted Cemetery rework is probably the worst one they've ever done. Shaitan rework's pretty terrible as well, but at least Shaitan is like... It, it, it's, it went from the same to the same, but for Haunted Cemetery, it went from absolutely terrible to even worse. So don't like this boss. Waste of time. Calamity Crab. Awesome boss. S tier. So I am going to order this part. So first of all, Sentry goes lower than him. And uh, Calamity Crab goes higher than NPC. I know, that's crazy, right? I just think this is the coolest thing they've ever done in recent memory. This is one of the best reworks they've ever done. Introducing the Calamity Crab is healthy for the game because he is a 11 out of 10 scary guy who randomly shows up when people try to run past everything in the Deadwater docks. And he's also the only enemy in the game that's capable of removing and destroying buildings and terrain. So he is completely badass. It is worth your time. It's fair. It's fun. And it's kind of like a special moment that all the players share with each other when they successfully kill a crab because of how scary it is. So I think the crab is the best tea room uh, in Realm of all of them. Lost Sentry. A little bit boring, honestly. A little. I do a lot of sentries because actually I'll put in C tier purely because it gives you like 50 to 60 fame, which is super good. So it is technically rewarding. Uh, bloody Cloak. I have a Bloody Cloak. It's not the best item ever, but it does make Rogue a bit cooler and does more damage. So I do think it's worth doing. So that's the main reason I'm putting it there. Lost Sentry is worth doing, but it is boring and kind of annoying. Rock Dragon, not worth doing, takes too long, and uh, is too leechable, so D tier. Davy, way too easy, doesn't make sense. It drops from the Ghost Ship Realm event, which is technically, so event gods are supposed to be a step higher from Godlands gods. Like, obviously, uh, Ghost Ship is harder than a Medusa, just a regular Medusa enemy. 
but this is an example where the boss it's literally like a non the dungeon is not even a real dungeon so davy jones needs a rework okay uh jade or garnet statue garnet statue is pretty cool i'm gonna put it in b tier this is like this is one of everyone's first deaths i feel like like if you're brand new to the game, you're gonna die to these two, and I think that's kind of a good thing actually because it will teach you a lesson. It will teach you about keeping your distance and not being too greedy. So I, I think they're pretty good. A little bit repetitive though. By the I've I've probably killed like literally hundreds of both of these. So by your five hundred five hundredth time, you're not gonna like die to them anymore, and it just becomes sort of a boring fight that you have to slog through every time. But it's still pretty good, I think. Hmm. Oh yeah, we have these ones. These are going to be lower than the tomb ones because the icy floor is honestly just not for me. I just think it's a little bit annoying. I actually think the ice tomb is easier than the regular tomb, but that's not necessarily a good thing. This becomes like a crown gambling simulator. You either will or won't get ice crown. I just, I just don't like ice tombs. I think it's a lame dungeon. This guy is not a real boss, but he is technically rewarding. I feel like the STs are pretty common on him, but he's not a good boss design-wise, so we're going to put him D tier. This thing's Force Maze, basically standard enemy. This thing is a uh, Tavern Guy, one of the Tavern bosses. I don't really know what that is. Probably a tap, either an alien or a Tavern boss. Cynodarian Reef boss. Mm, it's okay. I don't think it's as difficult or scary as most people believe. I I think the reason people struggle with this this dungeon is because they don't know that you can teleport inside the reef. Obviously, there's no reason you'd ever want to teleport in there. But since you can, that means you can just prevent yourself from dying whenever you want. It's like a free... You're getting an Oreo on any class that you're playing. So the fact you can teleport makes this dungeon a little bit too easy. Uh, it's also not the most rewarding thing to do like the poison's not worth using the scepter is no longer you like the only use for the scepter was like fame train stuff and that's like completely dead now so there's no reason to get either of the white bags i'm gonna put in d tier because there's just yeah not rewarding not worth your time and the teleport thing's kind of done i actually this is a rare case i don't usually provide a ton of like direct feedback to developers like i'm not the kind of person to yeah, I'm not I'm not a beta tester person. I like to play finished products that are like really high quality. Um, but this is something that I actually have talked to Deca about, and I just I suggested like removing the teleport function because it kind of makes it's just weird that you can make yourself invulnerable whenever you want in a dungeon that only has a boss. Like there's there's nowhere to run or teleport to. But they don't seem to care, so Deca is not going to remove that, um, or at least based, they they rejected my suggestion of removing the teleport in the reef. So that was one of the rare instances where I actually provided feedback. But I got rejected. So the Sandstone Titan. Weird. It's weirdly too... It's both too easy and too hard, which is obviously a contradictory statement that makes no sense, but that's how I feel. It's too easy because you can just sit there and do nothing and collect for your loot. And it's too hard because this dungeon's designed for low levels, but if you are a low level... It's going to kill you in a millisecond if it just runs on top of you and you don't have a stun. So, yeah, don't think it's kind of awkward, boss in general. Also, that's another boss that they've missed here. I don't think there's the Ancient Ruins Tea Room in here, but it would go in C probably just because it's an interesting little Disney's Aladdin reference, but otherwise, eh, kind of out of the way, not that rewarding. Permafrost Lord, D tier, annoying, has too much health. Annoying. Cursed library guy. Too easy. Also kind of annoying. Cogbold train. Pretty interesting, actually. I put an A tier. I actually think it's a very engaging fight. I put it right there. It. I guess it can be leached, though, which is the bad thing, but you're not really supposed to leech this. Whereas other things, like if you're leeching a rock dragon... I'm not going to get on your your back. It's pretty expected to do that. But I don't know. I feel like by default, you probably should not be leeching the, the train. So I'm not going to factor that too much this time. Cog Core. So this is the final boss of Cogbold. 
if if we're talking the advanced version of this boss, I would go. Actually, okay, so I I so I'm gonna go B for it, top of B for it. But if if we're talking the advanced version of the boss, I'm gonna go C because that 45 second survival second phase is awful. But if we're talking standard version, I'm gonna go B. And the reason it goes B is because this fight is too long. Uh, the invulnerable phases last way too long. It's just boring. Honestly, it's boring. It's not even like scary or genuinely. I guess minefield is a little scary, but it's just too long. The fight needs to go by quicker. It needs to go by quicker. I'm trying to snap there. I'm not the best snapper. So yeah, they need to shorten the uh, duration of that fight. Either remove one of the shield phases or uh, just have less invulnerability time, less dialogue, less dicking around. Get to the point. Ethereal Shrine. Ethereal Shrine is very average. I have very little to say about it. It's it's fair. Gives you a small taste of what to expect from Moonlight Village, but uh, is way easier than Moonlight Village. So not really at the same time. Also, the uh, teleport function is super overpowered for this as well. You can just give yourself a vulnerability whenever you want. Son of Arachnus, I think this is what it's called. It's, he's okay, I guess. Eh, honestly, see it here because... Eh, I guess it's objectively okay, but something about it is just not working for me. I can't really... So I've basically explained my thoughts for every boss so far. This one I can't really explain my thoughts for. I just don't like it. It's just a subjective thing. It's just, yeah, not for me. Daichi. Daichi has been reworked and is for the better, I think. So Daichi is probably going to be somewhere in B tier. Not that we're ordering the B. We're only ordering A and S. I'm going to put the train lower than Spectral Sentry, actually. But yeah, so Daichi, the rework made him... So first of all, the, uh, the the boss room has been closed off. So you can no longer camp outside the entrance. That's a good thing. Um, that, that exact same thing should apply to Agonized Titan. Exactly. That, that is how you fix Agonized Titan. Just block the entrance. Make it so people that wait outside can't go back in. That's how it should be. So, yeah, Daichi overall I think is in a good spot. White bags are pretty decent. And, um, yeah, rewarding, cool art in-depth fight honestly I could go to a yeah i'm gonna put it in a just because i particularly like how this fight has evolved over the years so i think it's in a good place personally all right we have the triple demon whatever not worth talking about red guy peer i think is his name peer is so boring peer i just fall asleep every time i do it it also sucks that the realm community has decided that we always do red first every single time. So you're you're always going to do this guy first. Super lame. Very boring. Blue guy. Blue dragon. Also super boring. Honestly, even more boring than red. It's it's. I'm falling asleep. I'm actively falling asleep. This is like a Belladonna situation because people will just camp in the bottom left. Uh, my eyes are failing me now. Are there other dragons? Yes, there is. Limos, hate the second, think it's super boring. Fergus, super boring. Probably a, a too many invulnerable phases of switching and dialogue and stuff. So yeah, uh, Lair of Draconis is one of the examples, I think, where the rework has made it worse. So I personally prefer the old Lair of Draconis, unfortunately. In every way except the art. Yes, the art did improve in the rework. Satheno. Satheno is pretty pog, honestly. Satheno is great. Iconic, well-balanced, rewards you for actually dodging if you're low level, so in a good place now. The Killer Nest. D tier. Super boring. Not that rewarding. Technically, yeah, it has an event white, but it's it might be the worst event white because it's pretty common to get because uh, the blueprint is super accessible. So kind of lame, honestly. Not worth not worth spending your time doing. And I, that comes from someone who has all three colored uh, behemoth event whites. Janus, so boring. 
Sucks. Not worth doing. There's a reason nobody does this is because everyone wants orcs. Nobody goes to the court of orcs. You're crazy. You are a crazy person if you go to a um, court of orcs, and I mean that in the most respectful way possible. Killer B Queen. A little bit boring. I'm gonna put in B personally. Just a little bit. Well, not exactly boring, but just there's zero variation to it. At least the Cogbold can switch it up and kind of it like. Sometimes you'll get saw blades. Sometimes you'll get minefield. Sometimes you'll get energy storm. Sometimes you'll get rip and tear. There's a bunch of different phases. This one though is the same every single time. It's the same every single time, and it's just not that interesting to me. But it's not terrible, so we're not gonna put it too low. And it is very worth it. You want to get dex exaltations. The queen stinger is a terrible white bag, but it's very useful for making other ones. It's good uh, forge material. This guy is actually pretty decent. I'm going to put him in B. Now, I would never put him in A, but the reason he does not go in A is because... Actually, no, it's C. C tier because activating all the switches is uh, inconvenient. And uh, while it is worth it, this boss can be trolled by players. So if the player knows what they're doing, they can make it so this guy never becomes vulnerable and you're just stuck there forever. So that sucks. The... Uh, Nest B flame keeper guy. Beekeeper. Mm. D tier. Poopy. Not worth your time. And uh, yeah, just not worth your time. Boring. Not even boring, but just very bland. Very bland. Um, Tesseract mommy. Tesseract mommy can go in C tier. Fight takes a little bit too long. Just not not one of my personal favorites. Just like this one, I can't really explain exactly why. Just not for me. I think it's kind of a waste of time. Not not worth the effort, basically. Nobody does third dimension, and that's because it's just not worth it. Uh, this is the same thing as that, just a different phase. I believe. Hopefully, someone correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that's the same thing. All right, we have some uh, orcs now. So orcs one is D tier. Because he can be stunned. Stun completely destroys this boss. He's supposed to be the icon of this game, the mascot. And yet, he rarely kills anyone because he's just going to be stunned constantly. So, yeah. I mean, the unstunned version of him is more engaging and fun. But you're just just—you're never going to see it. It's a dime a dozen. Orcs 2. Orcs 2 is okay. Not that great, though. Honestly, the rework. Eh, I guess it's technically an improvement, but... Nah, it's not really for me. Kind of lame. Orcs 3, however. Orcs 3 is awesome. Orcs 3 is our new number one. Love the fight. Love everything about it. It's, it's iconic. Great art. Everything about it is working for me. I like the challenge. I think it's fair. It's extremely rewarding because this is the only place in the game um, other than Shatter's where you can get like uh, the final tiered items, which are non-tradable, so you definitely want to do this. And it uh, gives you life exaltations as well, which is obviously super good for a permadeath game. I love everything about it. I have no nothing bad to say about it. Even the counters, I think the counters are totally fair. Um, because that's the player's fault. That's the that's the player's just trolling. That's not the dev's fault. So yeah, if you didn't know, when he, when he brings up his shield, if too many people deal damage to him, he will silence you all. In fact, when it released, you could get sickened from that but they've changed it since to only be silence. So not only is it fair, but I don't really even play it, place blame on the mechanics. That's just the players wanting to troll. All right. Crystal. No, this is the worm father guy. So the worm father itself dies in two seconds, and it's become even easier when... Um, the when the mystic stasis is the head so i believe this is the father and this is the mother so the father is just a pointless little thing that gives you like 10 fame the mother is a pretty decent fight however i think it's a very good fight i would put it top of a i think chris or a fungal cavern boss is pretty good well balanced balanced worth the effort and i also particularly like that this one gives you a wisdom exalt Actually, I'm going to put in S because it gives you a Wisdom Exalt. This is what Cogbold should have done. You should have gotten a, a, a Vit Exalt from the annoying train thing, or the, the 
the flying machine, this thing right here. So this thing does not give you a vid exalt. I don't like this thing. C tier, bad. You can leech outside the door too. But it has interesting art, I guess. I kind of want to put in D tier. Okay, we're not we're not ordering it, but let's put this on top of D tier because it's a useless little speed bump that gives you the same blueprint every single time and uh, does not give you a vid exalt and just makes the dungeon even longer than it needs to be. If they just removed... Yeah, actually, that's another way you could fix Cogbolt. Just remove the flying machine entirely and that will make the dungeon take less time. All right. Encore boss. D tier, way too easy, very lame. The only actual threat is the minions itself that he spawns. The, uh, the toothy... The toothy vagina, as I called it in the last video. D tier, because it can be leached, and it's, uh, yeah, just way too leachable. Just sit in the center, let all the other players go around and do the work for you. The uh, Mad God Mayhem In Realm Event Boss, which we have not experienced for like eight years now, I don't think. This boss was pretty interesting. I'm going to put it in B tier. I think it was a little too difficult, but pretty interesting. Uh, tea Room Puppet. Pointless. Not worth your time. Well, no, it is worth your time, but just, I don't know. It's whatever. It's whatever. I think it should give you more than one fame. I'm pretty sure this thing only gives you one fame. It might have been changed like five or six, but if this gave you more fame, then I would be less less cranky about it. Uh, D, or the Ghost Ship. Ghost Ship is fine. Uh, balanced, easy, rewarding. The uh, corruption thing. So this is the tea room in uh, Curse Library. D tier, honestly, hate this thing. Uh, inconvenient to activate. You have to run all the way back to spawn if you're by yourself. Uh, it's also weirdly challenging. And you can also abuse the, the boss room by leaving. The entrance does not seal itself off. So you can just leave anytime you want. And uh, yeah, that's lame. Bad, poorly designed. And the reward is honestly not worth it. Yeah, I like Corruption Cutter, but it's just not worth it, objectively. You're better off using a Tier 12 Dagger, because it just has more application. Mm, okay. High Tech Terror. High Tech Terror is C Tier for me. It has a lot to it, but none of it's really fun or engaging. And it takes too long. And it's not rewarding. Alright, we're, we're back to the goats now. The, the big boys. So this big boy right here is the Ivory Dragon. I would give this a C tier. Pretty much exactly the same thing as High Tech Terror. There's a lot to it. A lot of art has been invested. A lot of time and effort invested into this. But just not really fun or engaging. And not really worth your time either. The only time you're going to do like lods is um, if you're hunting, shiny hunting the water silk robe. Which at that point you can just leave. <laughs> you know, you don't even have to do the Ivory Dragon. But... The other time you do it is if there's a seasonal battle pass mission, which is sad because that's the only time people do Lair of Draconis and Third Dimension, uh, and even sometimes Haunted Cemetery. The only time those things are done is when you have to do it for a mission, which just speaks to how bad they are, poorly designed they are. Okay, Mega Moth. Mega Moth is kind of poopy, to be honest. There's literally like she, she or he, whatever, spews a bunch of poop in the room and that applies sicken to you very cool it also the difficulty of this one depends highly on whether there is a slow or not so i just kind of lame not for me i don't really find it fun here's the thing i don't like things that are in the middle i would rather have something super well designed or not designed at all like i'd rather have just a pure gambling loot simulator or a super interesting boss fight i don't like the like little things in the middle like these three that are just like not interesting and not rewarding. They're in the middle, so. Okay, just like before, let's go ahead and um, order these guys again based off of their dungeon just to make this easier. Oh, I've already done Orcs 3. So Crystal Cavern is next. Crystal Cavern is actually a C tier. I think it's a very boring fight. Um, there's a lot of like phase transitioning it's not exactly invulnerability, but it's like phase transitioning. And you're just kind of sitting around with your with your thumb up your ass waiting for the next thing to happen. So, yeah. And honestly, yeah, it's rewarding, but like 
personally, I, I care most about the wisdom exalts. And sometimes it's faster for me. Like, let's say I'm doing you. I'm just sitting in us East. Unfortunately, it will be faster for me to just leave the dungeon um, after fungal boss and go to another fungal boss than the time it will take me to complete the entire crystal cavern because all the minions are on crack and all that. So it's not that worth it. The white bags are pretty terrible as well. Crystal shield is awful. Uh, the prism is a meme item. The cloak is okay, I guess, but kind of a meme item. The sheath is actually extremely good. And the daggers are complete garbage. So not really worth it. All right, we're almost done here. We have shatters. We have moonlight. We have the void entity, which we'll do next. The void entity. Hmm. I guess it's pretty fun for the most part. I'll put it right there. It's it's fun. You can kind of turn your brain off. This is an example of a boss that you, do, you can turn your brain off, but you still have to you, know, you still kind of have to pay attention. Um, so I don't know. It's 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 both good and bad. It's good because it's an epic final boss. It's rewarding, worth your time, unique, cool setting, thematic, and all that. Um, but it's bad because you can't really solo it unless you're just a god gamer. Um, so it's basically a dungeon that you cannot solo even if you wanted to. And yeah. I don't know. I think it's kind of fallen off over the years. If you asked me like five years ago, I would put it in S tier because I loved it. But nowadays, it's like I'd rather just do Oryx 3 personally. Like I don't really see a reason to do Void Entity over Oryx 3 anymore because the best thing Void Entity is going to give me is like a tier 13 weapon, which I'd rather just have a tier 14 weapon. So yeah, just, just a little bit outdated. All right. Also, if... Uh, Actually, you know what? That's fine. I was going to say, I, I was going to request that they change some of the void items to be 8% fame bonuses, XP bonuses. But you know what? Actually, Omni and Quiver are both 8%. So that's that's fair because Nil, Armor of Nil probably should not be 8%. So I think that's actually fine. Overall, thumbs up for it, though. Just a little bit outdated and not as worth it as it was back in the day. And you can't solo it, which, it, which is preventing it from going to S for me. Or actually, you might be able to, but I've certainly never done it. And uh, I imagine it's like borderline impossible. All right, let's go for our Oryx 3 mini bosses now. So, in last place, we have Beza. Beza is, on the plus side, he is rewarding, and he's super easy, which is sometimes nice. Let's say you're playing a character that you're not super confident on. Like you're, Let's say you're, like you're playing a 0-8 knight. You're going to be a lot happier to see Beza than you would for some of the other ones. But... Um, is that a good thing? I guess so. It's it's a break from the challenge, I guess, is what this is. So I don't have a ton to say about it. B tier, it's not a particularly amazing fight, but it is chill and uh, is rewarding and worth doing. So, yeah. Then we can talk about Dama. Dama is so annoying because people will troll it. So... If you don't know what the term PvP means in Realm, it means players are intentionally doing things that will cause problems and damage to other players. So in this case, if all players stand in the same corner, then the speed of the rotation will go the same and the shots will be in certain places. I can't explain it exactly, but what I do know is that if all the players are in the same corner, then there is you're taking less damage. And if people spread them out, then the shots are going to be a flurry and the rotation speed is going to go faster. So this one is a boss that can get trolled. I also think it's stupid. I actually hate the whole lecture thing because the very first thing that happens when you enter this, this boss fight is you have to, if, if someone shoots him while he's talking his little dialogue, then we all get applied sickness. That's it. And that's going to happen every single time because sheep brains. We are, we're all sheep, right? We can't, we can't not do it. We're just too much of sheep. So it's because of sheep brains, I'm going to put this lower than Beza. Dom is annoying, but, but it is rewarding, obviously. Next up, we have Gemsbok. Gemsbok is interesting. I would put him in A tier behind Void. So Gemsbok is interesting. I think the whole heads or tails thing is very cool. There's the game where you have to try and uh, follow, follow along with the coin to find out which one. So I think this is mechanically interesting, fair, requires you to actually try. 
And uh, yeah, they actually bothered to patch a safe spot, which could have made this boss pit just free loot. Um, so there's no longer a safe spot. You actually have to try. I think it's pretty cool now. And then my favorite. My favorite is Lucorix. This is the one I get most excited for every time. So this one has three separate rage phase counters. And uh, this is not players trolling. This is players just being oblivious and not f focusing ads, is what we would say in World of Warcraft. Which is not our game I play a lot anymore, so I don't know why I said that. But yeah, so if you don't focus the ads, then you will get some rage phase counters, which actually makes it more fun. I find the I find the counter phases make it a lot more fun and engaging. So I like the counter phases. I like the rage phases. Um, and if you don't get the rage phases, well, it's just a fairly chill um, boss that has a lower accurate safe spot. There, he this Lucorix is obviously a bishop. He is a uh, holy man. So since he's a Christian, if you stand on the cross, the, the Jesus Christ symbol in the center of the, the boss room, you will dodge a lot of shots because you're being one with God or whatever. So this one, actually, I'm going to put an S tier. I like Lucorix a lot. I like everything about it. In fact, I like it more than that. And I, my, yeah, I like it a lot. This is going to be our second best. Lucorix is great. Okay, we are down to Shatters and Moonlight. Here we go. What did I do last time first? I think I did Moonlight. I actually don't even remember. I Yeah, let's just do Moonlight first. So Moonlight, I have to do the same spiel that I did in the last video. So it actually, you know what? We'll talk about all the phases this time. So for the last video from easiest to hardest, I only considered the finales. So if so the way it works is there's three dancers in Moonlight and you're going to get four phases for each dancer. And the last answer you get is going to dictate which finale you get. And as far as difficulty went, only the finale is relevant because, you know, all the other dances are very doable. But you know what? We will consider all the dances this time. So how are the pink dances? The pink dances, in so pink finale sucks. But other than the finale, the dances kind of suck as well. Yeah, I'm going to put in B tier because Moonlight is hard enough. I don't need some annoying sick and flower petals. Get off my back. So I don't like to see it. Don't enjoy it. It's annoying. Then we have uh, blue, or is that yellow? Oh, man. I think this is blue phases, I believe. So blue phases, blue finale is very chill. It's thematic. It's actually pretty interesting. It's sort of like uh, they do, I, I like blue a lot, actually. So the reason blue is cool, finale in particular is cool, but they're all cool, is that each of the dances have a name, and his will often be like wave crashing or like ocean and all that. And the finale is literally like the artwork becomes like waves. It's like you're on a beach and there's like waves coming towards you, but the waves are shots. So I think he's pretty cool. Um, so I'm going to put him pretty high. I'm going to put him right there. Yeah, we'll go with that. Pretty cool. Yellow phases. Yellow phases are easy, but they're kind of whatever. They're not nearly as interesting or cool as the blue faces, in my opinion. I would put it in A tier. So that's interesting. Each of the dancers are going to have a different spot in my eyes. I'm going to put this in uh, maybe below Gems Block. It's I just don't think the yellow faces are that interesting because the pink one is all about flowers and you're like dancing in a field. You're supposed to imagine it. This one is like you're on the ocean and the waves and everything. But this one is like just a bunch of lightning bolts, I guess. Yeah. The, her drums create lightning bolts. So I'm still putting it higher than this one because I enjoy Moonlight Village. It's probably my single favorite dungeon in the game. So Moonlight Village is super fun. And uh, I don't mind the pink ones, but these two are like genuinely fun. And that's the reason why the dungeon is so effective. Let's go for Umi next. Umi is an issue. Umi is a huge issue. I'm going to put Umi in top of A because it's too difficult. It's just way too hard. But I still think it's obviously very well designed. But yeah, way too difficult. Uh, majority of the player base of this game is never going to complete it. So I think that's kind of an odd decision. Just too difficult. But obviously it's still very impressive uh, mechanically and uh, artwork-wise. Then we'll have first boss, Bridge Sentinel. Shatter's first boss. Bridge Sentinel is fantastic. Like really, really well designed. I would put it like right there, new number two. Um, I really, really think it's a great boss. It's badass. It's thematic. It's cool. It's epic. It's fair, but still challenging. It's This boss is really doing everything a boss needs to do. Really like it. Then second boss. 
Second boss, I have become a master at, so I don't struggle with it anymore. But I still think it's, like, objectively, like, a little too difficult. So here's the pros to this guy. The pros to this guy is actually there's one pro. The one pro is that you get an attack exalt from this guy, if you did not know. Um, so you don't have to kill Shatter's third boss successfully in order to get at attack exalts. Thank God, right? So that's a good thing. But what do I really think about this guy? This guy is dumb. Honestly, I'm going to put him lower than the pink dancer. Because <laughs> the bombs, man, the bombs can hide themselves behind generators. They can hide themselves behind marble seals that players place. You have to deal with the annoying-ass generators, which are going to sicken you. Yeah, it is kind of a leechable fight, which is not a good thing. Yeah, it's it's just not... I don't like anything about it. Like I said, I don't struggle with this one at all anymore. I can I can do it with my eyes closed. But it's... I think it's annoying. I think it's a little bit too unfair for your average player. And uh, yeah, I don't think most people are, are going to be able to complete that successfully, which is not a good thing in my eyes. And here's this one. So this one I do struggle with. I have done it several times. I've done the new version of Shatters several times for the record. Because every time I talk trash about Shatters, the, the response is just you're bad, right? That's that's the response. But yes, I'm not the greatest at it, but I'm. This is that has nothing to do with it. Uh, my own personal skill, I mean, has nothing to do with it. For the whole player base, the whole wide scope, people can't do this boss. In fact, they can't do this boss so much that you will never be able to... Uh, complete a shatters outside of a discord and that is a problem because a lot of people myself included don't want to have discord open all the time uh listening to raid leaders who are just you know not the annoying gamer folk right i don't want to deal with discords in general and i'm not the only one that doesn't want discords to be so heavily influential in this game so this is so umi, umi you can do without a discord you'll find people doing umi without it but this is the only boss on this entire list that cannot be done without a Discord. Obviously, if you're a pro god gamer, that can solo it power to you. But just in general, I'm, this list is for general people. So that is a huge problem. Uh, mechanically, this thing's kind of a nightmare because there's so many r different rage phases that you have to watch the dialogue and chat for. So I'm going to put the Shatters King in C tier. I really am. I think the difficulty is way too much. It's too overtuned. And just the fact that you cannot d complete this boss through normal gameplay alone is a huge issue. Um, you will never, ever complete a Shatters from an avatar. Like an avatar drops a Shatters every single time in the realm. Never going to happen. Okay? Never. So that is an issue. I think this boss is way too difficult, way too overtuned. Patience isn't even a problem. It's everything. Patience is not the only problem. All of the phases are a problem. And then you throw in hard mode and it just gets even more nightmarish. So this boss is way too difficult, and that's why it's going to go solo. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be my ranking of the round bosses from worst to best. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.